Hey everybody, Stuart here, I hope you're well. The 1980s was a really interesting decade for rhythm guitar because you had all these great players from the 60s and 70s funk and soul scenes who were now playing in the studio and pop world. So artists like David Williams, who played for Michael Jackson, Ray Parker Jr., who played on all those amazing Motown sessions, and of course, Nile Rodgers from Chic, who is now working with Madonna, David Bowie, and so many more. So in this video, let's take a look at seven killer 80s funk licks. Lick number one uses a technique that's known as bubbling, and yes, that is the word that's used for it. You'll hear this in everything from Wannabe Starting Something by Michael Jackson, all the way through to Could You Be Loved by Bob Marley. In funk, soul, pop, reggae, this is a technique that you really have to master. Now, bubbling simply means playing a short, melodic figure that's very repetitive, and so it fits in and locks with the rest of the instrumentation. It's melodic, but it's also very percussive. The key thing is keep these parts sparse so they don't overbear the track and keep them consistent. I'm gonna add a slight palm mute to this first lick, which just helps to soften the sound and make it bed in with everything else around it. Lick number two carries on the bubbling theme. It's just the first lick, but with more notes added. Now this is more challenging from the picking hand, but you have to be able to play like this because in the 80s, guitarists would often find themselves doubling really fast synth lines. So being relaxed and consistent with the picking hand is something everybody should practice. Here we go, as before, I'll play the lick up to speed and then slowly. <laughs> Lick number three is another bubbling idea, but this one's a little bit more melodic this time. It's played on string three all the way through. The big challenge with this phrase is getting the muted notes in place. These are very deliberate and you have to focus on taking the pressure off the fretting hand at those points where you need that muted note. This is integral to funk, soul, 80s pop and so much more. So play this lick very slowly always thinking about where that muted note is falling within the bar, within the beats. Also, quite a strong attack is needed on the picking hand, the right hand, to get these notes to really pop out. Mm -hmm. 
Before I take you through Lick 4, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you know when the next videos are coming and you don't miss out. Okay, Lick number 4. 80s Funk Masters had complete control over every area of the register of the guitar, from the low end to the high end. They knew that by playing on strings 3, 2, and 1, they could cut through the mix perfectly. So this next phrase is really inspired by guitar players like Nile Rodgers and the great Hiram Bullock, who you must check out if you haven't already heard him. This kind of phrase really relies on very precise, consistent playing with the picking hand. You're going to need that really relaxed, loose strum so you can attack the strings and also get the part in place consistently. It's quite tricky to play the same rhythm over and over again, particularly when you're dealing with these 16th note grooves and the muted strings. Remember, you have to think and focus about taking the pressure off the fretting hand so you can get that muted string sound in place. Here we go, here's lick number four. Lick number five starts with an octave, and this is a real mainstay of that funk sound. Everybody from Django Reinhardt and Wes Montgomery to George Benson and many more have made octaves a part of their playing. To check out octaves in this sort of soul pop world, listen to I Want You Back by the Jackson Five and hear the octave pattern at the intro there. Remember, with octaves, the key thing is you have to mute the strings around the two notes that you're trying to play. If you're fretting down string four and two, as you are here, you're gonna to have to use other fingers to stop all the other strings from ringing out. Don't worry about getting a bit of a muted sound from them, that's part of the octave sound. And remember, of course, you really have to mute the string in between the octaves. So there's quite a lot of fingering needed when using octave patterns. The thing I love about octaves is that you can develop ideas really quickly. Start with the octave and then put a note in between the octave and see what happens, or put notes outside of the octave like I'm doing here. Pretty quickly, you'll find you can build chord parts from an initial octave. Here's lick number five.
Lick number six is pure David Williams, Michael Jackson's guitar player. Again, listen to Wannabe starting something and you'll hear the guitar break in that. These kind of ideas are based around chromatic patterns. So you're putting notes that don't belong in the key there very briefly. And because they're not there that long, the ear doesn't really complain about it. This is a real tour de force for the picking hand. You're picking every note and it's pretty up tempo. These kind of ideas would often double a synth line, so you have to be really precise and really clean with the picking. <laughs> Something like lick number six would often be harmonized as well. So you might find that you're playing a harmony or a doubling line with a synth, but then you might overdub a harmony guitar part over the top. So all I've done here is played the octave up from the original pattern. But experiment with this. You can get loads of sounds by playing some harmonies that should be there, or even dissonant harmonies that will give you a really, really kind of left of center sound. Remember, the key thing is precision and getting all these notes in the right place at exactly the right time. And finally, you can't cover 80s funk without looking at the genius of Prince. He had it all from Hendrix style lead to funkadelic style rhythm playing. Lick number seven is a real Prince inspired funk idea. Again, we're using strings three, two and one because they're gonna cut through the mix beautifully. And we're playing a consistent rhythm part. Remember, you've gotta watch out for where the muted strings are so you can get them in place. Now, artists like Prince and Nile Rodgers wouldn't always play exactly the same idea over and over again because they were completely confident in what they were doing and they never lost the groove. However, you want to work on getting consistency in place to begin with so that you then free yourself up to play these parts really naturally. The consistency thing is actually the hardest part to get through, but when you're there, you'll find you can effortlessly create all these rhythm style ideas. Thanks for watching everybody. I really hope you enjoy that and find it useful. No matter what genre you play in, getting some of these ideas in your playing will really make you a better guitarist and more in control of what you're doing. I've just released a new book all about soul rhythm guitar. So if you like the sound of that, check it out on the link below. Don't forget to hit subscribe because I'm currently working on a full 1980s funk rhythm guitar course for you. That will be available soon. Until then, take care of yourselves, stay well, and I'll see you soon.